First person view flight or FPV is such an amazing part of the drone hobby because it's whatever you want it to be. FPV drone flights are typically associated with hardcore flips, loops, rolls, and high speed acrobatics. The flights are short and they're over in just a few heart pounding minutes full of adrenaline rush. But what if I told you that you didn't have to fly FPV that way? That there was a category of FPV that you can just kick back, relax, put those goggles on for at least 10 or 15 minutes and immerse yourself in a long cruise style cinematic like flight. Maybe you want to explore a forest and weave through the trees. Fly over a river area and watch the water roll with confidence. Glide through fields to just take in the farm landscape. Or perhaps you'd like to go for a chase as far as possible. Welcome to the subcategory of micro long range FPV. Let's dive in together to see what you can do in this review of the Flywheel Explorer version two. This is the Flywheel Explorer Long Range Version 2 Digital Edition. Now this is designed to be a small, quiet, lightweight, non-intrusive, long-range HD FPV drone with extended flight times. Now the frame construction is known as a dead cat frame and this is because both arms are extended straight out horizontally. The reason for this setup is because it's ideal for your video. It ensures that the propellers will not be in view of the camera and you can have your camera at any angle. Now version 2.0 was a fairly major hardware upgrade. It has enough dedicated ports for everything on it with the F7 flight control stack. And the GPS module functions very reliably, locking in satellites within a few minutes each time. Now the huge extended antenna on the back is custom designed for the CADEX Vista and this is called the Atomic 5.8 gigahertz antenna and this will keep your DJI HD video reception up. Now whether you buy the digital or analog version to bind and fly, I strongly recommend going for a Crossfire Nano receiver. The TBS Tango 2 is my choice of Crossfire radio setup. It gives you up to one watt of output power, so there's plenty to go long range with this, and it works excellently with the Flywheel Explorer's Bind and Fly Crossfire version. The Flywheel Explorer is a joy to fly. It's really smooth, and I wouldn't change a thing about the factory tune settings. There's no jello or shakes in the onboard video from the CADEX Nebula Pro digital HD FPV camera, which by the way, I think looks really good and rivals the image quality of the full-size DJI FPV camera that comes with the air units. It is noticeably a little worse if you nitpick at it, but overall, it's really, really close, at least close enough for me. Now, the Flywheel is so relaxing to fly because you can just soar and explore, and GPS will save you. When your video goes out, it will freeze, stutter, or black out similar to GPS-based camera drones, but there's no need to panic. Just activate GPS Rescue and it starts coming back into range so you can get your video feedback or control link and fly home again. The factory pre-configured on-screen display settings in the goggles show you all the GPS data you need. Your display in the DJI goggles provides a live view of coordinates, the number of satellites locked in, current altitude, aircraft speed, and distance from home. To help you find your takeoff location in case you get lost, a directional arrow is on screen in the center and that always points toward home. The Explorer is a micro long range drone, so just what kind of range can you actually expect? Before we continue, just as a friendly reminder, please know your local drone laws and regulations. Long range FPV unfortunately isn't legal in many countries without a spotter to maintain visual line of sight. Okay. So the DJI FPV system itself has a maximum advertised transmission range of about four kilometers or two and a half miles. In, rea in reality, it's been shown that it's possible to fly beyond DJI specifications. But if we're just talking about the Flywheel Explorer Digital here, the actual range that you can achieve varies based on your battery choice, location, and conditions. In rural, wide open areas with a 1,100 milliamp per hour, high voltage 4S battery, you should be able to achieve at least two miles or 3.2 kilometers. That is before needing to return home due to LiPo battery life. 
For micro drones like this, I think that's pretty amazing. Oh, and by the way, that's with stock DJI antennas on your goggles, which are optimized for directional long range flight. Not bad. Let's weigh in on batteries for this. So starting with my preferred batteries, and then we'll go on to which ones to choose to stay under 250 grams and what one to choose to get the absolute max flight and distance. So my favorite all around battery is this one right here. This is the 4S 1100mAh LIHV battery. Now this weighs in at just 88 grams and you can fly a good 12 to 15 minutes on this battery in no end. Now for me, that is more than enough to get a good distance and flight time that I want. The Flywheel Explorer version 2 is billed as a lightweight 4 inch quad below 250 grams even if you add a battery. But which batteries? So let's start by weighing the Flywheel Explorer itself. 163.49 grams, 163.5 grams. So if we add my favorite LiPo battery, this does not keep us under 250 grams. Now there is another battery in this same series but it's the three cell. So the, here's a 3S 1100 lithium ion high voltage, and that puts us at 236.3 grams. This 3S will keep you under that 250 gram mark, but you're gonna have less power with these motors on 3S, although you'll still have at least about 10 minutes of flight time. How about an 850 milliamp per hour battery? Here's a Tattoo R-Line battery designed for racing. Nope, that's even heavier. At 261 grams, that's not gonna keep you under 250 either. These two batteries are what's gonna do it. 450 and 650 LIHV batteries from GMB. So the 450 will put us at 215 grams. Now the 650 will put us at 224 grams. Now, unfortunately, you're obviously going to have reduced flight time with these kind of batteries. Expect anywhere between five to eight minutes of flight time. Okay, now let's add a naked GoPro or high definition camera. So this is about 30 grams we're adding to the mix here. That's what that weighs, including the little 3D printed bracket. So what does that leave us with batteries that we can use? Can we use the three cell battery? Nah, we can't. It's too heavy. Can we use a 650? No, we can't. Unfortunately, it's just five grams above. Can we use a 450? Yes, just barely. So in conclusion, while it is possible to remain under 250 grams with the Flywheel Explorer, the reality is that it isn't easy to do without some significant compromises. Now, if you want the absolute maximum flight time possible, uh, you can get this 3000 milliamp per hour Flywheel lithium ion pack. Now remember though, with lithium ion, you need to really watch your throttle management. I personally don't feel that this is pack is necessary to enjoy the Flywoo, and really I would just rather invest in having two of these 1100s, which this is really what I believe will give you the best balance of flight time and power. If you're looking for any of these batteries, all of them are linked down in the video description below, and I will update it in the future if I discover any new options for you. Okay, let's talk more about GPS. So you may have used Return to Home on other more mainstream quadcopters like the DJI Mavics, the Autels. This is a little bit different. So we're gonna go over my GPS settings together and I'm gonna explain what you need to know before triggering Return to Home on this thing. To access the GPS rescue settings in beta flight, you need to enable expert mode and then you'll be able to unlock the fail safe section from the menu. So in this section, I first wanna call your attention to the allow arming without a fix option. Warning, GPS rescue will not be available. This is a, the equivalent of taking off before the drone has locked its home point or has enough satellites to get a 3D fix. You really don't wanna leave this on. The next setting is altitude mode. So it's by default set to maximum altitude. And I think that this is a good general setting. It's what I use. You can also choose fixed altitude or current altitude, but for obvious reasons, these may not be good. If you are, if you flew up and over a tree and then you're below the tree and it just returns at its current altitude, obviously that's bad. As a good general setting, just go with maximum altitude, but be mindful of this. Maximum altitude will return you home to the max height that you 
flew at for the entire duration of the flight. The next option here is sanity checks. So by default, it's set to on. Now, what is a sanity check? So when GPS rescue or return to home is triggered, the drone will go through multiple different checks to see whether or not it's safe to do. And the way it judges that is by two key things. Do we have enough satellites and are we far enough from the home point? So here we've got minimum of five satellites. As long as there are five satellites, you'll be able to take off and it will have a 3D or home point fix and it will pass the sanity check. Now the other sanity check that bites people and they don't realize is that you need to be a minimum distance from the home point for GPS return to home to function. If we go to the command line and type get GPS rescue min DTH, this is the minimum distance from home in meters that you must be for GPS rescue to work. This is how Betaflight or the software is able to figure out where home is. The drone needs to get out there and fly for a little bit so your home arrow is accurate and your home point is accurate. Now that we understand what sanity checks do, why do we want to set them to fail safe only? So I recommend doing this because this way, if your control link is lost, then it will go through all the checks. But otherwise, you'll be able to trigger GPS rescue on a button because you still have control and with fail safe only set, it's not going to just drop like a brick. And you can set your GPS button up in the modes tab really easy. I have it just on here, GPS rescue, and I assigned it to a button on my remote. Okay, let's discuss durability. So this drone was not designed with durability in mind as a first thought. Instead, the focus was on saving weight to have the longest flight times possible. As a result, the arms are extremely thin. Now they're not gonna survive a major impact or bashing. I repeat, this drone is not made for freestyle bashing. So do not buy it and expect that. Now to its credit, I did actually crash this into the very lower branches of a tree with the arm braces on at a decent rate of speed. And when I crashed, they didn't just snap off. So the included arm braces I really feel will help if you keep them on. Arms are also really cheap and easy to replace, but annoyingly, they give you only one arm in the box, one spare, so make sure to order more. And this huge, long, antenna here this is a stiff tube now it does give you excellent excellent range and reception but it's just begging to snap and break i would strongly advise ordering an extra antenna and tubing as well just to keep on hand in case that happens between the smo 4k camera an insta 360 go or a naked gopro hero 8 there are plenty of options for some lightweight HD cameras for the Flywoo to be able to capture some cinematic, sweet, buttery smooth, long range footage. My camera of choice is the GoPro Hero 8 Black stripped down and I believe that this is what will get you the absolute best footage. Unfortunately, you're going to have to build this yourself or buy it off someone who's able to do it for you. It's not officially sold anywhere. One little note about using a naked GoPro on the Flywoo. I've found that the electrical noise emitted by these cameras while recording affects the GPS's ability to maintain as many satellites as you normally would. So there are two easy workarounds to this. The first is to get all the satellites locked before you turn the GoPro on. And the second is to line the inside of the GoPro casing along the back with some copper or metal tape, or you can even just put it right on the back if you've already sealed it up. What that will do is it will shield the electrical noise that's being radiated from all around the camera and it'll force more of it to the front and away from the back of the GPS. In conclusion, I hope you enjoyed my review of the Flywoo Explorer micro long range drone and perhaps it will encourage you to try this different side of FPV. I really think that everyone should get to experience this style of flight. You know, whether you're new to FPV or have been flying for years and are looking to breathe new life into this sector of the hobby for yourself, I really believe that something like this is your ticket. Now before buying the Flywoo Explorer, I looked at every other option at the time. 
It was a tough decision. And I chose the Flywoo because I felt that it was the most polished option available at the time. In the end, I feel that, especially after flying the V2, they really nailed down a number of problems from V1. And this is just a good unit. This unit just really runs well. And the other contenders at the time of the V2 being released were just behind the curve. So I guess that's it guys. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. I would absolutely love to hear from you. Don't forget to subscribe please. And as always, have a great day. I'm gonna go do some flying. You guys take care.